Hey everyone, I am Lara Milligan coming to you live, just kidding, from Brooker Creek Preserve. And if you guys have never been here, first of all, you should come check us out. But I'm gonna tell you all about water as it relates to what we see here at Brooker Creek Preserve, which is the largest remaining natural area that we have here in Pinellas County. And so if you look here on this map, this green outline, and even all the way up here, is all Brooker Creek Preserve. It's about 8,700 acres if you like to know numbers, but what I wanna point out is there's another outline here if you look at the white, and that's something called the Brooker Creek Watershed. And what this is showing you is all this land over here, even on this side of the preserve, anytime that it rains, water that falls on that land, if it doesn't evaporate, it can ultimately flow into Brooker Creek and Brooker Creek ultimately then flows into Lake Tarpon. And so what's really important to think about is if you look outside of the preserve, you can see there's all different um, kind of colors on the map. And a lot of that is development, things like homes, there's some farmlands out there. And so we have to think about what we're doing like on our own property in our yards and on farms and things like that. If that water is flowing across that land, it can pick up a lot of stuff along the way. And again, that's gonna ultimately flow to Burker Creek. And so it's really important when we think about this idea of a watershed, this whole area that contributes to a body of water, what's happening there and how that might impact water quality. Okay, so we just walked a little bit away from where we just were over to our parking lot area at the preserve. And what I wanted to talk about here is the water cycle. And you might be wondering why I walked to a parking lot to do that. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out is we often learn the water cycle is this perfect circle where, right, there's condensation, precipitation, the rain falls on this beautiful landscape, it infiltrates into the soil and goes through this beautiful cycle. Um, unfortunately, especially in Pinellas County, where most of you guys are, most of you guys live that are watching this video, we have a lot of development. There's a lot of houses, there's a lot of shopping malls, and when we develop areas like that, we often build parking lots and roadways and those surfaces are something we call impervious surfaces. Basically, when the rain falls on something like a road, it can't infiltrate down into the soil. It has no choice but to basically what we call run off across the land. And in the case of a parking lot, maybe you guys have seen oil like dripping from underneath cars. I'm sure you've seen litter on the roadways, things like cigarette butts. Um, perhaps in your neighborhood, you've seen people leave pet waste behind. They don't pick up after their dogs. Or maybe you just helped your parents fertilize your yard. All of those things can get picked up when it rains. And if it's on a surface, like a sidewalk or a roadway, when it rains, it's gonna pick up all those, what we would call pollutants, right? And carry it wherever the water might flow downhill. So in this case, right, it's going to flow down. Fortunately here we have lots of plants that will help to kind of filter out some of those pollutants. But that's not always the case um, everywhere. So it's really important that we do our part to prevent pollution from the first place and where possible to, you know, really minimize development. And um, I'm standing here on a storm drain. You guys might walk by these all the time and just never notice them. So keep an eye out, but there's storm drains all over and their job is to help capture that storm water when it rains and that water is flowing very, very quickly across the roadways um, all throughout the county. Okay, so now we've traveled over to Brooker Creek itself. And one of the things I really wanna encourage you guys to think about is something water story. When I say the water story, there's a couple questions I want you to ask yourself. When I say, what's the water story here? You want to ask, where is this water coming from? What happens to this water? And where does this water go? So in the case of Brooker Creek, where does this water come from? It comes from Hillsborough County, the county next door to us. There's actually a preserve there called Brooker Creek Headwaters Nature Preserve. Now, the thing to consider is <laughs> it's not gonna be this beautiful, giant flowing creek like we see here. The headwaters, because Brooker Creek is a rain-fed creek, there's not like a big spring or anything. Maybe you guys have seen that with other rivers or you've gone to visit a spring. There's not really like something, a big attraction to see there at the headwaters where Brooker Creek starts. But it starts over there, it winds its way through all that land I showed you at the beginning and flows through this awesome place that we get to call Brooker Creek Preserve. Now, what happens to this water, 
right? Well, it's flowing through, but it's, there's tons of vegetation along the way. Um, and one of the things that we'll point out is the color of the water. So if you get a chance to look at the color of the water at Brooker Creek, it kind of looks like brown, a little bit orange if the sunlight is just right. And a lot of people might be like, that water's gross <laughs> and really polluted and dirty. Um, and that's actually not the case. So the reason that the water looks like this is because we have so much vegetation here. And as the trees drop their leaves into the water, it basically stains the water. There's something called tannins that leach out of the leaves and stain the water. So I always say it's like a cup of tea. So right, this is rain fed, rain is clear. Um, and then we add these leaves to it and it gets stained this color, just like a cup of tea after you add your tea leaves. So, and then what happens to this water I mentioned before, this water ultimately flows into Lake Tarpon, and we'll talk about what happens from there next. Okay, so now we've just turned around, we're facing the other way, the direction in which Brooker Creek flows into Lake Tarpon. So I mentioned that there's more to the story once the water gets to Lake Tarpon. So historically, maybe your parents or your grandparents have been here for a long time, and they might remember Lake Tarpon as Lake Butler. And Back in that time, the water would flow into the lake and that was the end of the story. Um, but we've actually made some changes to the lake over time. So a lot of people live around the lake and the lake levels would fluctuate based on the rain. So we have a rainy season kind of in our summertime when we get a lot of rain and the water level would go up. And then maybe in our dry season, the lake would go down. And people weren't really happy with either of those. They would either be flooded or they would lose their you know, waterfront property. So what we did is basically we dug a canal at the very southern end of the creek that now connects to what we call Old Tampa Bay or Upper Tampa Bay. And that allows us, there's what we call control structure. So we can actually, it's like a little dam and we can let water out of the lake during certain times when the water levels are really high so we can keep that really really constant but right that's a change that we've made to kind of the natural flow of water and that's again something to think about when we talk about the water story so there's one other thing I wanted to point out here and there's something called a flood plain which is basically when the creek gets really really high it can then basically flood out into a kind of like a plain area. And we have a massive floodplain and this helps prevent our homes from flooding and things like that, right? If we were to be building houses right here, they would be flooded and we don't want that. So this is a huge benefit that the preserve provides, something called flood storage. Now, you might not actually be able to see the water here, Brooker Creek, and that's because it's covered in something called Salvinia minima, which is an invasive plant species. Maybe you've heard of the term invasive. It just means it's not from this area and causes some type of harm. This fern, you can see it just totally covers, it's a floating water fern, it covers the surface of the water. And the reason that's bad and causes harm is because it prevents sunlight from penetrating down into the water. And there's lots of other plants that live underneath the water. There's lots of organisms that live underneath the water that really need that sunlight. Um, and so it basically disrupts the whole cycle and ultimately depletes the amount of oxygen that's available in the water. If we think about photosynthesis, the plants underneath the water aren't getting the sunlight they need to grow and produce oxygen, which impacts all the other species in the water. So it's an unfortunate thing that we have here, but we have lots of invasive plants and animals here in Florida. So it's just something that I wanted to point out to you guys. Okay, so we've walked a little bit further down the boardwalk and we are now at an area called an ecotone. And that's basically where two different ecosystems meet. It's where they come together. And you can see that really, really well here. So if you look over to the left, you can see that there's mostly what we call saw palmetto in the understory, so underneath the trees. And it's mostly dominated by, there's pine trees mostly, there's a couple oaks popped in. And then when you slowly transition and look to the right, we start to get ferns in the understory. There's other tree species that start to pop up. Our state tree, the sable palm. Um, we have all sorts of different oak species. We start to get something called the tupelo tree. And you might have been able to tell that there's a slight um, downslope here from left to right. The elevation's going down ever so slightly. And 
in Florida, that dramatically changes what we see above ground. Unlike other areas up north where you have to travel thousands of feet to change what we see above the ground, here it's only a matter of inches. And that all has to do with something called the water table, like where the water level sits beneath our feet, what we call the groundwater. And so just those slight changes in elevation totally changes the structure of the soil and then what plants are able to be found there. And, and this area is really beneficial for wildlife because there's way more diversity of plants in this area where the two ecosystems meet. All right, so we're at another stop now and we want to highlight a different water story that we he have here at Brooker Creek. So the tree species that I want to point out behind me is a cypress tree. It's a pond cypress tree. There's a couple things I want to point out. The first is a, a key water story. And if you look down at the base of the tree, you'll see it's kind of like brown and green. And then if you, as you move up the tree, it starts to turn white. And that in itself is a water story. What's that is telling us is that the water levels can fluctuate basically up until that point where there's white. That white is usually some type of lichen and lichen do not like to grow in water. Um, and again, so I mentioned we have a wet season and a dry season. So we're currently in the dry season. So the water level is down, but it's telling us that during the wet season, the rainy season, the water level can rise up until to that point in the water. The other thing I want to point out is the base of the tree. You might notice that it slowly gets wider and wider at the base. The cypress tree and the tupelo trees are really well known for this. It's something called buttressing, a buttress base. And that is an adaptation for trees that live in water, basically. It gives them more stabilization. So I want to do a quick demonstration to kind of highlight the the power of that buttress base. So uh, my camera woman, Julia, is going to help me with this demonstration. It's something I always usually ask for volunteer for. So I'm going to be, I don't know, let's just say a pine tree that happens to be growing, you know, near the edge of the water like we saw over there. They're very, very straight, right? And so if we get some type of windstorm, let's say a hurricane that comes through, right, the wind's coming and oh, I'm just easily going to fall over because my, my base is very straight and narrow. But if I'm a cypress tree or a tupelo tree and I have the buttress base, right, I'm gonna be very strong and firm. So the next time a hurricane comes through, you're not knocking me down. <laughs> so it's one um, adaptation that these trees have to survive in a very, very wet soil. The other adaptation that they have is something called cypress knees. This is specific to the cypress tree. Um, there's different theories as to the purpose of these knees. They're kind of these little protrusions that stick out of the soil. One is that they're used for gas exchange because they're in an environment that's always covered by water and that really limits the ability of the knees to to do this ga gas exchange without these knees. Um, another theory is that it helps further stabilize them. It's like an extension of their <laughs> stabilization system. And another, this is actually my personal favorite, <laughs> is that it helps with competition. So they're sending up all these knees and that prevents other trees from growing nearby. So again, there's just so much to learn and so many different characteristics and adaptations and water stories that we can learn about, not only here at Brooker Creek Preserve, but also right at home in your neighborhood. All right, guys, that's a wrap for the water story here at Brooker Creek Preserve. Again, I encourage you, if you've never been here, beg your parents, grandparents, guardians to come bring you out here. Um, it's an amazing place to take a hike. And when the Education Center is open, there's all sorts of fun things you can do and see and explore in there as well. Um, I just wanted to remind you guys that no matter where you live, we all live in a watershed. You guys remember like that area of land that ultimately flows to some body of water. So you can make it your homework assignment to figure out which watershed you live in and then figure out what you want to do to help protect that watershed so for a lot of people some easy things you can do if you have a pet right and you're not picking up after your pet please consider bringing a baggie with you and picking up after your pet that's a lot of extra waste and bacteria and nutrients that do not need to be entering our waterways and same with litter 
even if it's not your litter and you do your part just to pick up trash along the way as you see it, that's a huge help and benefit, not only to our water, but to all of the plants and animals that live and survive and thrive in that water. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning in and remember to share this information with family and friends and come see us here at Burker Creek Preserve. Thanks everyone.